Here's a car that's going to make me eat my own words. It's a 2007 Chevy Impella with 470,000 miles on it and it's still going strong. And no, it hasn't had a million dollars of work done to it. But this Impella from his father for three grand with 160,000 miles on it. He's put another 300,000 on it. <laughs> And it doesn't sound like that. That's a local fart mobile here. We're gonna go through this thing and see how the heck did it last so long. Obviously maintenance was done. It still looks okay. We'll check under the hood. Yeah, that's broken, but I mean, hey. We'll pull on the whole thing. In we go. And, yes. It is a 3500 V6. They can be very dependable engines. I'm not arguing that. But here's the oddest thing on earth. These are the toys for crappy automatic transmissions. But even though this thing's got 460,000 miles on it, it still shifts good. Now he bought it from his father. And this is also going to shock you. The transmission fluid has never, ever been changed. I certainly wouldn't advise changing it now. You'd be tempting fate. As we look around here, it was made in Canada. I do have to say the Canadians do a very good job of putting them together. I mean, all this mileage, how does it start? Starts right off. Doesn't really shake all that bad. We'll put it in gear, see what happens. You get a little roll, but I mean, really, it's got 460,000 miles on it. That's not bad at all. And yes, the AC still works. Now the owner was honest with me, he said when his father had it, the second year he had it, he had like 40,000 miles on it. The head gasket blew. GM replaced the head gasket completely free. Well, they certainly did a good job putting it back together because that was like 420,000 miles ago and it's still running. And that's dirty, but it's coming from Missouri. Came a long way. They just saw the road there. They did have to replace the alternator recently, as you can see. That's brand new. Now, interestingly enough, this is a flex fuel vehicle and the owner does switch back and forth and he hasn't had any problems with it. This is a Repo Man car, just like in a movie. It handles radioactive materials in the trunk. Now, it's not glowing like the Repo Man car. You see it's got plywood under there, and it certainly isn't a time machine like the Repo Man car. He handles these 50-pound containers of radioactive isotopes for cancer treatments on animals. So he does have a radioactive trunk, <laughs> just like in Repo Man. And he's worried that all the weight, because he cares a bunch of them is going to knock it off. But it's still going down the road. Who knows? Maybe the radioactivity is the reason this thing is still going 460,000 miles later. Maybe it's a newly evolved type of shot. Way. I don't know. Now, of course, the reason it's heavy is because they got to line it with lead. This trunk doesn't glow because the packages are lined with lead. But lead's heavy, and it's still going down the road. Now, granted, this window just fell down. He's got a piece of cardboard holding it up. But this old Impala, it's still leaping along down the road. Let's put the scan tool on it. Now, while the outthink tool is setting itself up, we must realize one thing but it means a lot. He drives this thing 530 miles a day. Highway driving is equivalent to 10% city driving. He got from his father with 160 on it, so he put another 300,000 miles on it, but if he did it all on the highway, that's equivalent to about 30,000 miles. So now things are starting to become clear. Well, we got a few codes. It's an old car. First, we'll look at the body. What's the code for that? Recirculation position command circuit actuator stuck. So what? It still blows cold. Check the next one. It says the tire pressure sensors aren't working right. Well, no duh on that one. They got batteries in them. You know what happens after time? The batteries go bad. If you want to change them all out, spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars taking the tires apart, putting new sensors in, reprogram, go right ahead. Tire pressure gauges cost five, ten dollars. Get a gauge. Don't throw your money away on an old thing like this. We don't really care about that either. EVAP system, large leak detected. Might need a gas cap, something like that it still runs perfectly fine old car like this who cares it's still running down the road now let's look at the data we'll go to read data stream and start it up look at the engine then remember blue is good it's got bad data it'll be a different color oh my god the evaporative emissions vent control cylinders is not venting well, that's probably the thing. It's probably stuck. It says it's got a large leak, so that probably means the thing's stuck open. That's probably what it is, but it runs good enough. No one cares. Now realize, this is the flex fuel car. So, 
It's got an old fuel, and he runs it on flex fuel. Not bad for an old car. Look, the long-term fuel term is almost zero. 0 0.781. Oh, we'll look at a little more. No surprise that your spark advance moves around a little. It's, it's an old car with a worn engine. And really, for a car the size of its age, he gets about 25 miles a gallon when he uses gasoline. When he uses ethanol, the E85, he only gets 20 miles a gallon. Always keep that in mind. Ethanol has less British thermal units than gasoline, so it gets worse gas mods. That's just how they go. But on the BF of this car, he's running on both regular gasoline and ethanol, and it still works perfectly fine. So that system is still working and adjusting the engine so that it runs good. Look at some of the transmission data. It's not moving, so the output's zero. It's not slipping. That's good. Check out misfire data. The injector circuits are all fine. Were there any misfires where they had to disable the injector? No, 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 no. Not for all six cylinders. Here's all the misfires. Zero, 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 zero. Quite impressive for a car with 460,000 miles on it. Hey, this is going to make me eat my words. Although they are highway mileage, let's take that into consideration now. The bright lights are stuck on all the time, but what the heck. All the better to see you with when you're driving. <laughs> and here we go, up the hill. Hey, you still got impressive power in it? You can have a little oversteer on an old car like this. You know, he does have a tendency eating up wheel bearings. They always were kind of weak on this. And of course, wheel bearings are going to wear out faster as the suspension system gets worn. Things aren't perfectly aligned. And if you're off just a few thousandths of an inch, guess what? It's going to wear the wheel bearings because they're sitting a little bit cockeyed and they're spinning thousands of times every minute. So. Eventually, the wheel bearings go out, and he's had to replace a few times. Now, the brakes still work decent. Yeah, the struts are worn. You can hear groaning and creaking, but hey, you groan and creak if you had 460,000 miles on you, too. Let's take the little drag strip here and see if it's got anything left in this engine. It still handles in the curves. It's not falling apart. Here we come to the little drag strip. Let's see how this thing goes. I can hear a few things rattling, but here we go. All right, not a rocket ship, but... Still got some decent pickup, you know? And the transmission's not clunking either. Yeah, you hear things bopping up and down when you hit things, but really, look, I don't even have my hands on the wheel. It's going pretty straight. <laughs> I'm impressed, smooth running car. Now, it still has the original water pump, the original radiator, it's still going. Now, he admits the rear main seal of the engine leaks a little bit of oil. It doesn't burn off, but it leaks a little bit of oil. And the power steering pump leaks a bit of oil too, so he has to add a little here and there. For this age, it makes me wonder, why couldn't GM make them all like this? Was this a once in a universe Impala that they made here? I don't know, it's got me kind of wondering. I mean, it looks like a normal ghost stock Impala. It doesn't seem to have any alien markings on it, although there are some scratches on the bumper here. Maybe ET was trying to get out and scratch his way out, I don't know. So proving that I'm an honest man, here it is, the Impala with 460,000 miles that the man bought from his father for three grand with 160,000 miles. So 300,000 miles and he spent $3,000. Boy, that's a pretty good deal, you know? <laughs> You're not gonna get deals like that all that often. You go back to 1999, these Suburbans were rock solid. Now a guy just bought this for only five grand. The body's in immaculate shape. Solid as can be. That's just superficial rust. They built these things solid. This guy's the third owner, but really only the second owner. An old man had it for ages. Then a guy bought it and flipped it. He only owned it for a month, and he just bought it as it stands now. You do have to check the frames out, because if they're up north, a lot of them will rot away. This obviously came from down south somewhere. There's no rust on it at all. And that is a big deal on these, because the old ones, they can rust up north. This one, no, it's solid. Now realize, the original Suburban, we're going back like 1935. They were the first Suburbans just based on a truck. As you can see by the picture, they're a truck frame, and they turned them into what their idea of a station wagon was back in the day. A big, trucky station wagon. It's the longest produced vehicle in America, the Suburban. They're still making them. And they always were big, giant vehicles. Certainly, you can carry a lot of stuff in them. Sure, they get bad gas mods because they're big vehicles. That's how these things are. But the engines, the transmissions back in the day, like this, 99. 
They were solid built. They weren't using those Mexican made rear end differentials that would just wear out too fast because they built them too sloppy. These are solid built vehicles. If they're not rusted, they can go a long way. Now, sure, the leather seats rip. That's going to happen, you know. Still works. Look, it goes back and forth. This was a pretty luxurious vehicle in its time back in 99. 128,748. 0.3 miles on it. We'll start her up. And yes, he's done something to the exhaust. It's a racing Suburban. He put Flowmasters on it. I gotta say, it does sound impressive. The paint's still good. It's still shining away. Although the chrome's seen better days. It's got some little aluminum tape on it. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> It's got all kinds of room. He's got the other seat taken out, but you can see you can put them back in. You can carry an awful lot of people. Hey, the rear AC and heat still work. Now you notice this is a different color. Well, that's because he had another Suburban that just rotted out and there was nothing left. And he wanted to keep some of his cool parts from the old one. So he bolted them on here. His original one was a different color. It's a 99, but it's still fuel injected. It's going to be a little bit heavier on the gas use. They're not as efficient, so he doesn't know what he's getting because he's afraid of finding out. So we don't know. We're guessing 12, 13, but it just filled it up coming over here, and it cost him 175 bucks to fill it up. So not a cheap gas bill for this thing. But when you consider he paid five grand for it, he just got it. And the engine sounds this good. Since he only paid five grand for it, he's got a lot of money left over to buy gasoline. These things are better made than the newer ones are, by far. Numero uno, they're not made in Mexico. And that's a big deal as far as I'm concerned. And I have to agree by the lack of corrosion, that's just rusted heavens. And the clean frame below certainly was a southern car or maybe Arizona. Now this is a four wheel drive vehicle. As you can see, you go neutral, two wheel high, four wheel high, four wheel low, or even auto four wheel drive. Now we look in the back, boy, there is a lot of room in the back of this. You can certainly sleep in it, have parties in it. And if you want, you can put the third row seats in and put a whole bunch of people in it. And if you really want to extend things, you can throw the wings out. You can pretend it's a Tesla. Look at that idle, smooth as can be. Check engine lights on, we'll check that later just to see what nonsense that is. High up in the air, four wheel drive. We can fly over my little berm here. And yes, it does ride like a boat. So happy sailing. And yeah, the handling leaves a bit to be desired. Look, you can turn the wheel and it's still pretty much going straight. Now, it's a big heavy vehicle, but we step on the gas. Oh, that sounds good. It gets up and goes. That's not a race car. It weighs an awful lot. But you feel safe and secure in this thing, let me tell you. I'm not worried about anybody plowing into me. So here we have the Suburban, perfect for a Suburban neighborhood. <laughs> Well, I'd say he got a heck of a deal. It didn't have any exhaust when he bought it. Now, with what he put on it, it really sounds sweet. Now the check engine light was on, so let's check that. No, it's a 99, it just plugs in. And here we go. It says the catalytic converter's below efficiency. Okay, it still does have a catalytic converter. The efficiency is below threshold. It could easily be an oxygen sensor. It runs perfectly fine. Let's look at the data and see what's actually happening. So we'll start it up, and what do we have? The short term fuel trim is 0%, fuel trim for the other bank too. It's subtracting 0 0.8, 0 0.16, that's not bad at all. These do have a tendency of running a little bit rich. They're not as efficient. They tend to run a little bit rich as they age. He could put some cleaner in it, but I mean it runs so good and when you rev it up, you can hear a little backfire, see? That's showing you it is running a little bit rich. Now, just because of the age on this thing, if it was mine, I'd probably just go get fuel injectors. And I'd just say, what the heck, I'd put in new fuel injectors. You could try cleaning them and stuff, but uh, he does go through an awful lot of gas, and that would be the only simple thing that could get a little bit better gas mileage would be putting new fuel injectors. So now, if you don't care that much about gas mileage and you want something that's comfy, you're gonna go all over. Maybe you're taking kids to a soccer game. Let me tell you, nothing says class like an old Suburban that's got good paint job. People look at you when you drive down the road. They wave at you. You can't buy class in a new vehicle. They all look the same. Back from 1935 when they first made them, this may be the pinnacle. 
I do have to say, probably 99 would be my pick if I was going to get one because it's got fuel injection, it's got a decent transmission, but it doesn't have all the plastic crap that the new ones have. It isn't made in Mexico. Pretty solid built vehicles that you can still get parts for. Everything's readily available, interchangeable with a lot of other GM parts, big old V8 engine that you can fix when you have to, but you heard this thing practically not broken in. It's running so smooth. So you're looking for something like this, go old. Don't go new. News a mistake with a Suburban. Every customer I have that bought a late model one in the last 10 years, transmission broke. Oh, it's burning oil now. These old ones, they rock solid. You can find one that was a Southern car like this with no rust on the frame, eat it up. Even if you get tired of it, somebody else will buy it from you down the lines. But if you can get it for something like this for five grand. This is a 96 and it's a 2500. Check it out. Pretty clean, custom bed, huge bed. Best of all, baby's only got 109,000 miles on it. Got a big old V8 engine, and look, it's a 96. What's that? Metal. Is it plastic? No. Is it gonna warp with the heat? No. And didn't make them as cheap as they possibly could, like they do today with all this plastic crap. Maybe old, but with that mileage, you can find one of these when they were solid built. Start you up. Now granted, this one's old, 96, and the AC doesn't work anymore. You can see the compression doesn't come on. This may be old, but the AC system is a more modern style. I did a video on a 70 Oldsmobile, which is a GM product, right? It had the old giant radio compressor, and it still worked perfectly fine. These are weak compressors. You probably have to replace it if you want to have AC in the vehicle. Not all that bad here in Tennessee. You don't care all that much with an old work truck. The engine, listen to it, solid. Because it's only got 100,000 miles on it. You can hear when you close the hood. It's a solid vehicle. Since it's hot, we'll roll all the windows down. Take it for a spin. Got it in reverse, nice and smooth. Big out truck, you're high up in the air. Of course, it drives like a truck. It is a pickup truck. It's got a solid feel. Front end seems pretty normal. After all, it's only got 100,000 miles on it. So we'll take it out where it belongs, out on a country road and see how it does. But while I'm driving around, I notice there's no wheel bearing hum. There's no whining bearings. There's no lag. The brakes work perfectly fine. I don't hear any suspension noises clacking, clunking. So we'll go to our little test strip here out in the country. We'll come to a stop. Wait till this guy gets out of the way. Since there's nobody behind us. And let's see what this old truck can do. Still got some get up and go. Just decent for the mileage. Front end is stable. Basically, it's a big old American pickup truck when they were still making them good at GM back in 1996. Now, of course, most of these are gonna be all worn out with four or 500,000 miles on them. You find one like this, it's only got 100,000 miles on it. You want a big pickup truck, snap it up fast. Who says you can't go back in time? Hey, I'm back in 1996. Still a really good pickup truck. What really amazing about this truck is look at the interior. It's a 96. The original interior is still in excellent shape. Hey, they used to make things pretty good. Sure, the odd cigarette burning a rug, but hey, it's a pickup truck. Now, it may be old, but it's a 96, so I can use a modern computer on it, too. So we'll hook it up. There's the data port. And we'll turn it on. Scanning it. Runs fine, but it has these weird codes. C2, C10F1, and C2, C18F1. Well, the brakes are working fine now, but that particular code is for the sensor, for the master cylinder pressure, saying that there's an error in the data coming out of it. Hey, it's an old truck, you know? I mean, if the master cylinder goes bad, when you stop on it, it'll start sinking. It doesn't do any of that. That's a wiring problem. Hey, it's a 96. You know these things are gonna wear out. The warning systems wear out, but the vehicle keeps going, so that's nothing to worry about. So let's look at data, live data. The MAV sensor's pretty normal. Everything so far looks good. Now it's an old truck, okay? So the long-term fuel turning on bank one is minus three. So it's running a little rich on bank number one. Eh, it's an old truck, right? 
but look at the long-term future on bank two at zero. That's why it's got a little bit of a roll at an idle, because bank one probably got a leaky injector. You can try cleaning them, but bank two was running perfect. So yeah, it runs a little rich on bank one. Maybe the fuel injector is maybe a little dirty. Run a little cleaner, but otherwise the truck runs really fine. And a pretty good truck with that low mileage. Now, yes, it's a vortex system, and you can see one side's run a little bit rich. At some point in time, it's probably going to have to have that vortex fuel injection system replaced. It's all plastic stuff inside the engine. Eventually, the plastic's going to go bad, but it's a doable job. Yeah, you'll pay a thousand something bucks to do it, but then and away you go and it runs good enough now it doesn't need anything right now but in the future it'll probably need that but I mean really you're looking at $70,000 new pickup so you put a thousand or so in it over the years that's not a solid well-built truck for a decent price beats the heck out of buying a brand new $70,000 one that probably isn't made as well as these old ones are so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell